Hello, let's see if I can keep my mind in order and show you a little thing of a conversation that I had this morning with the Fighter Light Warriors in the group on my audio in the audio room. And we talked about uh, Carmen was saying that she was following the sticking to her bowls and she was doing everything right, but then she had a moment and got weak and wanted to eat pizza and she had a slice just to wake up the next day having lost weight. So then she wondering, was it the pizza? What happened? Because she got confused. How, what do you do when you kind of get rewarded for crappy behavior? Not what you really should be doing because that is not gonna help you comply, right? So sometimes when my people who don't have a huge appetite like myself, they forget it's not only about the size, it's what you do with the size. So if you're a small eater, you can definitely eat Hershey's Kisses, french fries and, be, and bacon and pretty much never having any big distended post supersized pogo meal belly, but you're still going to gain fat. You're still going to be a french fry person, a skinny fat, because again, it's not only about the volume. So if you eat small, you're not going to gain weight right off the bat after, which you do with a big meal, but you're going to notice that you can accumulate body fat anyway. So no matter what, you're not going to get away unless you're one of those people who believe, yes, of course you can have a cheat day if your cheat day is considered a cheat day and it's just too little, that you are happy with one apple and one granola bar and then a glass of wine, of course, that's going to be a normal common sense of a starter, a toddler version of the first we feed when you only have 500 calories in extra on top of your regular calorie budget to get lean and strong. So remember now, everyone in the whole diet culture loves to say that they have to have such a customized personal plan with every little gram lined out. And that is all fear of freedom. It's diet prison. It's people are freaked out and everything in marketing, diet marketing, is to make you think that, oh crap, if you don't know everything about everything you put in your body and everything, you have no control. Ooh, so they do that on purpose. And all the doctors are signing off and giving you all these crazy routines that you should know about. And I just say this, it's bullshit. So when you cheat and the rhythm and weight fluctuations, fluctuations, what can happen then? So I wanted to just kind of line out here to have, when you go in, first of all, when you start my calorie budget system, you start my fighter diet routine to get you where you want to be, you're probably going to start here much more plumped up and fatted up because usually in diet culture, everyone starts a challenge before uh, they have like a kickoff where you're going to eat up all you know you're not going to have for the next three months because you have a goal. It's so important for you. So you're going to make sure now you get fed up with this food. You're going to eat all your kryptonite food, junk food, everything one more time. Ugh, you should disgust disgusted with yourself. And then now you're confident going into this. You're going to do this. That was the last time you were a pig, all right? We know that. So you start here, so you're gonna first work off that falsely higher level of body fat, body glycogen, you have that in your muscles, you have to work that off. So you're gonna be happy in the first days because after a huge, um, huge pig out, where you add libitum, eat whatever you want, and I'm gonna say this, when you don't want to track all of a sudden, when you're usually a macro obsessed tracker, but you don't do that on your so-called cheat days. Cheat days is the term for, I don't want to comply. I don't think that this is something I should know. One day out of my week does affect me as an athlete. And if I'm into bodybuilding, everything matters. So one day adds up. If you think about it, that's 52 days in a year, just that. So of course it's going to affect you. 52 days, that's like uh, two months. Two months, it's, well, there's 12. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's complicated math, right? Now I can't think. Oh, six months. I, I lost where I'm at. <laughs> you, you get the idea, right? It's like, it's carry budget here. Day one and day two, you're going to work off the, the super compensation. The more fat, the more water from the glycogen. So you're going to be happy that you lost the weight. But that's just water from you riding a tsunami wave. 
surfing the diet tsunami wave. That's when you know it's gonna happen, you can't control yourself, you don't wanna control yourself, you want to be weak, you wanna have all the junk food and forget about it, start over Monday, even though it's gonna have you gain fat, you're gonna believe you're gonna be more motivated and never do it again. You just do that every week, so, and you don't wanna kinda really get over yourself because you're embarrassed, plus you kinda want to have the glutton because we all know, remember that, you enjoy the food when you had that moment. You didn't like it when you realized the consequence. Because no matter how much you thought about it, fantasized about it, when you had it, it would never be as delicious as you thought after the first few bites. And then the more you've eaten, the more sabotage, and the more you're gonna forget about all the cardio you spent time on because that's gonna be a waste of time from a fat loss standpoint. From a health standpoint, from cardiovascular, yes, of course. The cardio, you have perfect cardio, but do you wanna be cardio bunny and perfect marathon runner but you're gonna have a fat body that doesn't feel good to be in there's a lot of people like that and i don't know how you can handle that jogging or running when you're too heavy for your own good so when you start here you're gonna be happy you lost weight then around for, for thursday that's when you notice you're gonna have appetite which you believe is hunger that might be if you're trying to starve yourself by doing all or nothing and you're not doing the pole, but you're not doing fire because you're terrified about the scale. Again, you, got, you go by acute changes and you're terrified that if you eat the pobo meals in order to prevent the real overeating indulgences, which are you can't get away with, I tell you, stuff yourself the way I tell you. That's what we do. When you can't think because you just want to stuff yourself, stuff your face, and you say the same thing to me all the time. I don't know what happened. I just stuffed myself. I don't know what to do. I can't control myself. I know that. You're great at eating. So do that. I tell you, do that. Prevent overeating by overeating. I'm telling you, you already know what to do. You do it every week. You do it too much. And then you go into agony. You're like, oh, why did I do that? Yes, yeah, stop crying about it. You know what to do. Now just do it with the right fuel. You do it fight or light style. There's a system. The way we do it has rules. It has guidelines. There's a strategy. It's a system. You can't just do it the way you want. That's why you're in trouble. You have to do it my way and you are in paradise. So now on Thursday, you're going to start noticing you're going to get hungry, hungry, hungry. And if you're relying on willpower, of course, you're going to be hungry because there is no backup system. There is no defense. There is no armed forces to help you out where you're going to break under the pressure. You cannot keep it up. We know it. So what are you going to do? Well, you have no solution unless you're on fighter diet, right? You're just in diet culture trying to do what everyone else is doing and nobody can do it. And the whole world has signed up on this contract. Everyone knows nobody can live on a diet. Like nobody can stick onto a diet. Everyone believes that. I'm just like, of course not. If it's doing it your way, which is we're going to pretend we're going to try to stop eating until we die. Well, of course, humanity knows that's a problem. So we are not going to be able to override and kind of self-die. That is what you're trying to have control over. Of course, you're never going to make it. <laughs> so about a, having a six-pack of abs, being shredded, like that's a luxury goal. In living in Candyland nation, yeah, bet, you bet. There's always all the things you can sabotage yourself with and do and go back on your own word and forget about your dreams, never cheat with them. And remember too, if you don't have me, who do you know is going to fight for your goals and your fitness dreams? Do you know anyone? I want to know who that is because I want to meet that person who cares about you. Because it's terrifying for me. I know nobody cares about my goals. If I don't do what I do, it's nobody's going to tell me to do it. They probably like me better that I don't do what other people wish they had done. So I never outsource my motivation need. I can't take care of it myself. So if you don't have fight or diet, you're going to have no other area but go into this typical weekend problem where you're going to notice that all the goals, all things you talked about that you were so important, you forget about that. Because you didn't want to make a plan on how to override the tsunami wave so you can actually come out on Monday not being an, oh my God, I have to confess to Catholic priest Pauline confession booth for the sins I committed. And just like the sins you don't get away with because you have the action here is a consequence. You have fattened up since last week and that's you. So what are we going to do about it? Making a better plan? But every time you feel too embarrassed, feel like you lost face, that you are ashamed and all that stuff is just stupid. Like you are asking yourself to be some kind of person that nobody can be unless they have made it their life mission like me to be able to override what the whole world tells can't be done. And I'm doing it. 
So if you want to wake up on a Monday feeling amazing, like you just woke up, you live in fitness paradise life, you're in fire at Nirvana, you have to live according to it. You have to live the day before the way you want to wake up the day next, hoping to live. So that's how I coined the whole thing of, well, if I have my munchies every night, I'm going to have the same thought. I want more. Of course I want more. My body is lean by my self-discipline. It's always going to want to fatten up. That's natural. I know that. So, of course, I'm going to have a natural interest to want to eat. Plus, I'm a foodie. I love to eat. So knowing myself, I know it's a natural sign that I always want to have food. And if you don't understand, that's you. That's your life. You're going to notice that, oh, my God, why am I so obsessed with food? Why do I care? Because before you cared about fitness, you didn't care about being structured with your food. There was no reason. You didn't like your body then, but you didn't have the, uh, the interest in food, right? Because you ate whatever you wanted. Now, you don't have that luxury anymore. Now, you have to be precise because body composition requires proper way of accountability, adherence, compliance. And not at all as short time as you want. Because you are relying on acute changes in making your calls, which is not at all what you do. So again, back here. Now, so what do you do then if you don't go for falling for your slip and thinking that, oh my God, I can't control myself. I'm just going to have a cheat day and then start over again. And then you wake up more and you overdid it. And if you're a big eater, you can definitely sabotage for weeks to, at a time. Especially the more muscle you have, the leaner you become, the more you're going to be likely to be able to just eat out. Like you are just insatiable. It's a natural consequence. The leaner you are, the more you're going to want to eat. And that's why it's so important to find a way that you can eat and satisfy and enjoy it. That's fire that's for me. Like There's no way I would want to do this if I didn't love it every day. Does it mean that I don't ever want to have something that I know? Well, if I eat this, I'm not going to be able to be lean tomorrow because it's going to add up to my fat body fat. If I have one slice of cheesecake, I know it's like 12, 1300 calories. That's almost my whole day's calorie worth. If I want that, I have to plan it. And I also have to be accepting of the consequence. But if I do that too often, I make that my call too often, the calorie body blows up and the average is going to be too high for me to get lean. That's why it matters that you don't help yourself throughout these things. If you help yourself through the calorie body, the calorie body isn't consistent. You believe so, but you forget about those things. Every little thing that just happens, everything little life happens, a little bit of lick, a little bit of bite, a little bit of that, all adds up to the calorie body. Because your body system is like a trend, it's like a season. It's not a weather report in Britain where it rains one moment and the next there's nothing. So let's say you just learn now to kind of prevent the tsunami by having the proper meal. What happens then is like when you start noticing that you want to stuff yourself, you do it. You do it, the prevent overeating by overeating, you do the pobo, you stick to your bowls, right? You do this ones. Oh, I want to show you that. I had fun the weekend. Um, okay, don't resist, give in, don't starve, get stuffed, fight at Nirvana. It's just you have to know how. Resist to surrender, fight at Nirvana. Big kind of dick. Well, no, oh, sorry, uh, diet, dinner. Why fast when I can feast? Pobo life, saved by the pobo. So remember this, saved by the pobo. Have that as a mind thing. You have to plan because when you go back on your word, you want to eat everything that isn't going to help you get lean. You know what happens? You stop thinking and you don't want to have the solution. That's what you're going to notice in the kryptonite challenge. This one. You're going to notice that you believe this is all you want. That is so important for you uh, to, uh, you know, to have this dream body. You want it so much because you know... How it feels to be living in that. But you also know how it feels to have an empty stomach, right? And how does that make you feel at late at night when there's nothing else to do that to crawl around your bed thinking about the food? But on fire at you're not that person because we don't have those starving, starving, willpower and all that. We eat, we enjoy, we plan our refeed indulgences because it's a life, it's a lifestyle. It's not be on a diet until you die. We have afterlife, after diet life strategies how to go back then, because if you don't learn how to enjoy food while you're losing fat, how the heck do you think you're going to be able to do it when you shred it? When I tell you that you're going to be 5,000 times hungrier and starve down naturally, so you are starved out. When you don't have as much body fat as before, you are starved out. There's nothing I make up. And uh, got the big appetite, gym bed, kitchen, fire at warrior. 
got the pobo in love with the only one fitness paradise that's not me it's a diet because the only one that you can stick to that you love the only one worth your life because life is hopefully too long to be starving just to be lean or somewhat looking healthy be healthy on the inside he's gonna suck if you don't enjoy it trust me so it's much better to kind of embrace that you're not going to have your perfect dream body, but you're going to be happy eating healthy. You're going to have a healthy system and you're going to compromise with what your body can show for you is good. And you're just going to accept that this is my body. I love it because I'm not conditional because I know what I did. And it's unfair to my body if I blamed it for what I and my mind did. So when you now stick to the tsunami wave, you're going to wake up having followed it, followed it. And you had your pizza slice, but you could control yourself to one pizza slice. Why? Because you had the poba meal. Now you enjoy it. You don't have five slices. And definitely not the whole pizza, unless you make it a fire rat pizza, right? And that's a refeed, and that's a whole other story. Now you're going to notice that the scale isn't fluctuating up and down as much, unless you have an unusual salt intake, unusual thing. But that's not the point. You have to just have this rule of thumb. Know what you did, food-wise, training-wise. That's what you have to remember. Because it doesn't matter how much you freak out about the scale fluctuation if it's not about the food you ate. If it's not calories you ate that are just going to be real fat gain. If you know what you did, if you stuck to care about it and you're not pretending that you did, you're in the clear. It's just fluctuation. That's what I show you. My body, even if I stick to exactly the same routine all the time, I still don't have the exact same look in the mirror every day because my body is alive just like me. It's not a still life. It's not going to be like that. So you cannot make your life thinking that once you have achieved your body, it's going to look the same, be the same, feel the same every day. And you're not going to want to have the same food every day for the rest of your life, even though you love it now, because it's going to fluctuate. It's going to be like trends, you know, one day you want cinnamon, another day you want cardamom, another day you want chocolate, another vanilla. So you have to know that we want it all, right? So that's what I'm talking about. Fitness Life has all the flavors and you're going to struggle and you're going to be in paradise. It's going to be all of it, just like regular life. But if you give up, you're not going to have any of the harvest. So the longer you keep on working to prevent overeating by doing that, you're going to notice that there is no drama about the hunger. Because you are not hunger, hungry and you're going to learn how to actually enjoy food so you have your appetite satisfied too. You just have to know that just because you want it all the time doesn't mean you want to. Because when you want what you want all the time and get it all you want, you start wanting it and it doesn't feel that much amazing anymore. It's no different than if you're on vacation every day all the time or having something that is a rock concert every day or you're having the best orgasm every day or you're having the best ever workout every day. It becomes average. It becomes nothing special. That's why we have holiday and celebration. It makes the themes and the feast more rewarding because how does it feel when they start Christmas in August? You're tired of Christmas in September. Same thing with this whole thing. You're just obsessed right now because you have made that kind of kryptonite, that food into your kind of fantasy. But if that fantasy was your reality, you would be bored with it because look at what has happened. You're already living your fantasy pretty much. You've been giving yourself whatever you want in food and how do you feel? Right? That's what you've been doing. You have not been in check of your diet or your recipe or your nutrition or your workout. You haven't cared about your body. You have done the way the typical mainstream people do. And then suddenly you wake up and you want more. So remember now, you have been doing this. How do you feel? Is this how you want to live? Is this what makes you happy? Just being able to eat whatever you want? Probably not, right? Only if you have the body. Yeah, but that's not going to happen unless you learn how to change your mindset so you feel the exact same thing. So when I look at Farad, when I live Farad, when I want Farad, that's all I want. I feel like I hit the mega millions in all that I got the body and I got to eat because I wanted that. That was my holy grail, the catch-22 of fitness that I was to solve. That was my life mission. And I solved it. So when you notice then you are not hungry, you get to indulge, there is no drama, you know you're not going to starve, and that kryptonite is part of the plan, so there's no thing coming back. You're not running away from your fears, you're not, you know, chased by your demons, you're not trying to kind of escape your kryptonite, you're not taking out all the food you love and say, I'm never going to have this again, I'm too scared. Because what you do there, you set up your own diet prison, you never get out. 
you're going to tr keep on trying to go away, but you're going to crawl back to your kryptonite, the heroin addict. That's you, guys. It's just the, the worst thing is that this is all approved by the whole world. Everyone loves to have their little eating disorder that can't keep yourself together. Because everyone likes to do that game, play the game, the diet, diet, try a little bit and then cry about it. And everyone says, yeah, you tried. Stupid. So, acute changes. The scale can always go up and down, up and down, up and down. Doesn't matter, per se. Size. After refeed, you might be a little larger if you eat a lot of carbs. But again, if you keep to your calorie budget, you don't have that problem. Storage. So when you eat more carbs than usually, you're going to have the super compensation effect. Water drops in one or two days. Carbs are not the same as ice cream, chocolate. That is junk food. Carbs are like grain, uh, legumes, apples, starch. So what you believe is carbs is fast food, junk food. That's why keto is so popular. People forget, no, ice cream is not a carb. Ice cream is junk. It's a difference. So they just want scapegoats for everything, you know. What is the trend now to blame, you know? Oh, it's fasting. Oh, yeah, it's your DNA right now is the problem. And that's so hard to have control over that they're going to sell you all kinds of subs and solutions and have you fast for five days just to fatten up even more. And that's a doctor approved. Isn't it weird? So when you refeed and lose weight the day post after you ate pizza and you didn't keep it together, what do you do then? Was that the way to do it? Well, you can try to eat a slice of pizza on top of your calorie budget every day and see what happens. I know what's going to happen. You're going to gain a lot of weight over time. Not over day, but over time. So if you lose weight the next day after a sudden you had a slice of pizza you didn't plan on, now you're going to tell me that, oh, you got away. Well, hold on. You might just one time. But it also be that you are in a surplus and if you definitely went on a surfing, a diet surf, and you don't even want to think about what you ate. And you, we just know when you've just been glutton of all the stuff we know, it's so easy to eat up because it's man-made and it has all the flavors, textures and calories and fats and sugar. It's so delicious. It's typical like Cinnabon. We go there or uh, Krispy Kremes. Like it just melts. McDonald's, french fries, you guys that you'd go and even go to that, I think it's ridiculous, just why, why not you just make it fighter diet once instead, so you can have a huge amount instead of just one, one, who wants to eat one french fries, it's like pointless, so when you have a huge tsunami wave, you can actually accumulate the pizza calories, not the next day, so when you wake up the day right after you had all these offenses, if you ate something that was like me, like I love to eat the ice cream, it just, your body hasn't gotten to accumulate it in body fat yet. yet. It's a little delayed. Super compensation with carbs go fast and salt. But fat accumulation can happen over one or two days. So you might have packed in all the fat and then you were so, you know, oh, you stepped on the scale. You're so relieved because it didn't go up. Well, you're not in the clear because you just accumulate in body fat. So then the next two days... You might notice that, what is going on? Why do I feel fatter? You feel on your belly. It feels like it's f thicker, like firmer. Feel like marbles in your skin if you've loosened out the skin a little bit. That's new de novo lipogenesis, I believe. That's when you, have new, you have new body fat. And every time that you force your body by doing that, it becomes more thrifty and you can proliferate to amplify fat cells. So now you have more fat cells that are going to cry about hunger that you can fatten up and fill up. It's just very much harder to get rid of them. But you can, there's like endless storage. It's like iCloud without any fees. So you can definitely wake up without weight, long, weight gain. And you can lose weight um, right after refeed. It doesn't change what I say is going to be what you do. Because you can have any regular day, the scale is going to fluctuate. You can have any refeed, good or bad, in con, you know, conducive or not, proper or not, cheat day, good or not. So-called get away with cheat, which is a stupid term. I call it treat day because cheat is like you're not cheating anyone except for making your own having a destructive, negative kind of report to yourself, which I try to get out of because what is this guilt thing? Like you have been in the wrong world for so long. You have this guilt stuff going on. I don't know. It's crazy. So if anything, you should feel guilty for giving up on your own dreams and goals all the time and only listening to the world and putting yourself on the last list of priorities in your life and nobody else is putting you on top so don't think about the acute changes and fluctuations it's about actions behavior and over time is what matters 
your body in fat loss and muscle is about trends. It's like running the government and you have to make a three-year plan for the economy or you will not have a good plan and there will be not the, the consequence you want. So let's say, just have an example here. So day one to day 13, let's say you go here, you're consistent with the calorie budget, and then in rhythm, you have a planned slice of pizza. You did the pobo meal here, so you can have this, no problem. There's no problem resisting to go for more. You're so stuffed and satisfied. You have your fight right refeed delight after this. So you're completely happy. What happens? You're gonna wake up on the Monday on point, on progress, leaner, stronger, happier, on roll. And now you're gonna notice that the more you do that, the more you are accountable and adhere to the rhythm, you're gonna notice how the calorie budget every day doesn't have to be as precise. You don't have to kind of struggle with keeping it low because when you are less crazy on the spontaneous impulses, you're gonna have more freedom of being more relaxed over the time. And then that's going to add up to your body's going to be happier. And when you can do that, you're going to notice that the refeeds will be more bigger. You don't have to have only 500 calories. Might 750, you know, 1,000. Might double it because the leaner you get, now you're going to want to eat more. And then when you get to eat more, it suppresses your appetite even more. Now you have more energy to train. You can build more muscle. Now you can build lean muscle because you have already gotten into eating more because you can eat more healthy food when you do so consistently. It's those, oh, I can't help myself, that you go for that sabotage everything I build up. So what happens then if you're not consistent with your adherence? So let's say, First of all, you start already here with a pobo not been done because you wanted to have a flat belly. And then you go in here and you're going to have um, starting fatter than usual because you have to work off the tsunami wave stuff. So that is like the first five, six, seven days or two weeks. But anyway, um, it takes a few weeks usually. So you are like working just on damage control here. But let's say we got rid of that, and now you're gonna try for 13 days. You are all or nothing. You you will power yourself. You keep in track, 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 and then you start to get scared. Here is where I would say, why don't you have? Hold on. Why don't you have the pobo here? This is where you want to have the pobo. Go to the pobo. Got the pobo? Because you are hungry. You're starving. You're terrified. What is? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Well, you're going to notice like how it's day and night if you eat up and you're not physically hungry and psychologically thinking that there's no way that you can eat anything. You can't, you can't, can't. All you're doing there's inviting because you are setting up the perfect orgasm in your mind for that kryptonite food you want. So you're doing the same thing as really working a long, long foreplay before you're going to get laid with the best ever sex ever. So... Remember how you can work up an orgasm? The same thing here. Why do you do that so you want it more? Like you are becoming more and more addicted to this fix. So you can kind of suffer for weeks because you're going to look, over, look forward to this. But this is how you become skinny fat, lose muscle, gain fat, hate your life. And do you really want to live for weeks thinking about one time in the future you're going to eat one time and you have to starve all the way up there? Is that how you want to live the rest of your life? I don't. So that's what you kind of keep doing if you're in diet prison and self and have coaches who kind of don't let you take ownership over what happens when you don't want to track. Because I know all your trackers, you're so obsessed with having perfect diet journals until you don't want to do it anymore. When you have, you can't control yourself. Oh, you want to go, you want to follow the whole diet prison and everyone who does it. You want to have the cheat day. You want to do it because everyone else does it. But you know what happens. But you don't want to talk about it now. Then get mad at me for calling you out. So you hide away. And then you come a few weeks later. Always like, oh, I know Pauline was right. Like, yeah, but this is boring. Because you could be in competition shape by now. Instead of being 15 pounds over BMI range or being a healthy body. So what you do then is that you don't want to do the pobo, you don't do the prevent overeating by overeating, you will go straight into Candyland with a flat belly, empty, you can maximize the sabotaging, now you eat a whole pizza and ice cream, and then what is going to happen? Well, you weren't planning on this, right? Oh, I couldn't, I tried, I planned, I was going to be more moderate, I was going to... Yeah, you didn't make a complete plan, and you didn't go and do the pobo, you wanted 
to eat it. You want it because when I asked you then, well, what was the thought when I said, when you sit there, you want it and you start to think, oh, I want the food more. And you realize that, yeah, I kind of want the food, even though I know that I'm going to fatten up from it. How can that be? I was so angry last time when I said, how can I eat all this when I know how it's going to make me feel next time when I've worked so hard? Why do I do this? Well, because you're glutton, you want to eat that. And then you want to pretend that you're stronger than you are, you're cocky. And your whole human nature tells you, yeah, you're going to do it because you're going to feel so disgusted. You're going to use all the guilt to blame all the negative feelings for you to motivate yourself up to get yourself over and keep working hard. And that doesn't last long enough until you're back and feeling discouraged. Life happens, now you're eating pizza again. So that's how you never get lean. So, when you pig out and seem to lose weight the day after, the fat can accumulate over the two days. So, remember that you're not going to be on the scale and thinking you are saved. saved. And then, if the scale goes up for no reason and you are in the clear, again, doesn't matter. So, you have to stop. So, it doesn't matter what the scale is saying right off there. It's about the cons- actions, the behavior. And it's you have to be aware of what you're doing because you can't be in... in uninformed, uneducated, unrefined, undeveloped, prototypical kind of human being when you are supposed to be a self-actualized, self-managed, self-driven, self-going woman with a drive, with a mission, with a vision, and she wants to do it. And she also knows that there's nobody else who's going to do it for her and you're worth it. So don't give up now just because it's so hard. It is hard. And that's the challenge. Be excited about it. All right. Thank you for listening.